Today I'm joined by Dina Ionesco, Hello. who's the Hello, yeah. welcome, the head of the Migration, Environment and Climate Change Division here at IOM. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about uh, the work that uh, Dina and, and the organization has been doing um, to address uh, climate change, environment and the links with migration. Um, we've seen that between 2008 and 2016, there were some 25 million people per year that were displaced by sudden disasters on average. Mm -hmm. and, on average. And, and that's not uh, even considering people who have suffered uh, from slow degradation of their environment. Um, mm -hmm. IOM has been leading on, on environmental migration programs for or in, in, in 40 countries. What can you tell us about the work of IOM and how it has evolved over the years? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes, you, you mentioned some uh, figures that are very striking and um, it's how I think the, the topic has evolved and appeared in the organization. There has been a push, I think, from the reality, from what we've seen on the ground, that people were affected by disasters, natural disasters, such as floods or typhoons. And this was leading to migration. And we saw more and more that people are affected by very slow um, events and processes like desertification or coastal erosion. And that also can lead to migration. So our work started from, I think, two directions. One is the, um, the reality call from the field, which I think makes the nature of this organization that uh, is so connected to, to, to people uh, and their needs. And this is connected, I think, with a real vision and uh, a real uh, political will and to um, bring to light the environmental uh, drivers of migration. So there is this connection between the vision that current migration, contemporary migration, cannot afford to ignore that there's climate change and environmental degradation and the needs to address people on the move because of the environment, climate change and disasters. So the work has evolved a lot over the years. Um, just to tell you, I found uh, one of our first uh, research papers from the 70s. And then I found another report from the 90s, but around the COP15 in Copenhagen uh, and around 2007, 2008, there has been really an acceleration of activity on connecting climate change, environmental issues and migration. And what we saw is that we as IOM had to move into the climate work because that's where there were negotiations. That's where states open up a space for discussion. And we worked a lot on integrating migration into that because I think the migration world wasn't yet ready for this conversation. And this recognition by states, is it reflected also in the, the Global Compact for Migration, for example, which is this intergovernmental negotiated uh, agreement that will hopefully be um, signed by the end of this year? Is there, is there also a component that addresses migration and, and climate change? As, as I said, I think this migration and environment and climate change connection has evolved very much in other agendas for many years. Environmental one, ecosystem one, climate one, land one, water. We have simply a, um, a historical opportunity for states to now recognize overall um, processes and climate change on migration. But it's more than that. It's also about um, recognizing that there is also migration that has an impact on the environment. The way we manage and states manage uh, programs, activities and migratory movements has also a big impact on resources, on waste management, on water, uh, on the way the environment is uh, protected as well, like forests. Um, so there is this positive recognition and we really hope uh, that it will continue and it will be in the text and that in the, in the um, follow-up, in the capacity building mechanism, in the implementation mechanism, we will have a very visible 
uh, dimension. And uh, talking about the comprehensive approach, are we only focusing on addressing the needs of the people that are that are hit by disasters in order to to prevent them from from moving? Um, or are we also looking at the people who are already on the move uh, mm -hmm. uh, due to disasters and, and, and slow onset uh, events? So, in fact, I would say uh, beyond what you just uh, said, in fact, we uh, address three dimensions. I would maybe make it in three, three, dimensions. three, okay. three main dimensions. So, IOM provides solutions for people to allow them to stay by investing and partnering with environmental key stakeholders. So you can imagine it's about the preservation of ecosystems, mangroves in um, Americas or in Asia. It's about fighting against desertification in the Sahel. It is about investing in all the environmental solution with the partners so that people do not have to move in a forced way, that they have an alternative to stay. So that's about first solutions for people to stay. Um, the second dimension you mentioned, it's about supporting people on the move. So when there is a hurricane that hits like in the Caribbean at the beginning of the year, when there are major floods, when there is uh, important drought in Africa, uh, as we saw also in 2017, millions of people displaced by drought, for instance, from Somalia, then it's about supporting these people. It's much more, I would say, humanitarian type of solutions, assistance, and also the whole work on trying to understand why these people move and what supporting their needs. And then the third element that you had not mentioned, but I think which is at the heart of our work and it's key, it's providing solutions for people to move. And that connects us back also with the global compact on migration. Solutions for people to move, it means to um, see migration also as a part of the solution. And it's about our own vision about um, how we see contemporary migration policy. So it's about providing people with alternatives for voluntary migration, for dignified migration. And this the small uh, island states from the Pacific and all the engagement we saw from Fiji, Kiribati, it's at the forefront of such work. So imagining regional solutions, frameworks, agreements of migration, imagining labor migration for very degraded areas. So it's about knowing that this climate change impacts are happening and not waiting for people to be under the water because of sea level rise. It's about offering them possibilities to use migration in a positive, dignified, a safe mode instead of speaking only about displacement, forced form of migration, tragic migration, uh, migration of despair. So these are, I would say, <laughs> the three dimensions. Yeah, it's, it's about sharing the, the knowledge in yes. a way as well. And I just wanted to ask you uh, finally about this, this Atlas of Environmental Migration. Um, when was this published and, and what does it contain? What, what is it about? Okay, so the, the, thank you very much for the question. So the Atlas of Environmental Migration, it's a um, publication that uh, is available now in English, French and German. Uh, it was published in 2017. And the objective of this book was to put in one single uh, space, in a one document, what we know and what we don't know about environmental migration, because there are many myths around environmental migration. It's a topic that came from total invisibility to almost fashion and ex extreme exposure. So there is a lot of myths, also conceptions about, for instance, confusing people at risk and people who are really migrants because of climate change. So the idea was to partner uh, between the International Organization for Migrations and we partner with an academic partner, François Gemmen, with whom we work on many other uh, dimensions of this topic. And we wrote this uh, publication with three 
um, energies coming mm. from that. Uh, Which is not, it's not short, by the way. It's, it's a, not it's short, but there was a major effort, in fact, to make something extremely complicated as simple as possible. It is about putting in simple words something that is extremely complex at the end of the day. So for the, for the experts and also the, the general public who want to, to access I uh, really the hope materials. so. And this publication has received also a lot of support from states. It has received a lot of support from um, our uh, di director general. It's part of our vision to put the topic on, on the agenda. And it has received a lot of support from the academic world because it's all a partnership with hundreds of academics. We are a migration mandate organization. So our role is to be able to bring environmental and climate change dimension into the migration policy world and work we do and operations we do. Tina, thank you so much. I hope that you will continue leading this uh, amazing work. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please feel free to leave your questions uh, in the comments and we'll see you next time.